Some of you just found out that someone at your table knows what a flashlight is. Right? That's gonna be a fun drive home with Pop Pop. Welcome to Something Crunchy. The Valley's number one comedy entertainment podcast. Biscuit is homies with Blake. Blake is the older brother of Blair. And Blair is married to Biscuit. Here are your hosts, Colin Blake with Blair and Tyler Dressel. All right. Welcome to Something Crunchy. I'm Colin Blake. With me as always, Blair and Tyler Dressel. Thank you for joining us by way of 97.3 The Rattler, a Rev. You Get Your Podcast. We have one of our favorite guests coming back to Crunch Down tonight. He's an actor, writer, producer, and stand-up comedian who you know from comedy specials Fun Size, Daddy Issues, and Starfish, which was just released and available to stream on Veeps. He'll be back in the Valley at Tempe Improv on Thursday, February 1st through Sunday the 3rd. Please welcome back Brad Williams. Hello, all. Nice to, nice to talk to you guys again. Uh, I'm stoked, man. I'm stoked to be going back to Arizona. Arizona loves you, Brad. Yeah. Your shows sell out so quickly. Excited to have you back on. What's new in your world, man? Oh, geez. Uh, uh, I mean, I, I walk my daughter to school. That's something that hasn't been a, a thing ever in my life because I'm, I'm a relatively new dad. I mean, she just turned four. Uh, when we're recording this, it's actually raining in Southern California. My daughter is also a dwarf, which means when I walk her to school, it's a giant game of uh, one of these puddles could end our lives. No. <laughs> so you guys, you know, when you have puddles, when it, whenever it does rain in Arizona, it's fun. Not, you know, me and my daughter, we got the raincoat, we got the rain boots. She's got floaties. I, I, I put a flag on her in, in case she goes down the stream so I can mark her. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it, it's the whole nine yards. And, and, and of course she loves watching Peppa Pig. So she, she just, she yells out jumping muddy puddles and I'm like, no, uh, <laughs> so it's a, it's a whole trip, man. Those are problems we do not have in Phoenix. We are not in danger of any floods. The two or three days a year that we do see a little sprinkle, it doesn't really affect the kids much here. Well, we do have a three-year-old and. That puddles, it's happening either which way, no matter how deep, shallow, anything, it's head first, straight into that puddle. <laughs> yep. Yep. Pretty now, much. Yep. And, now, and, now it's, and now it's a weird thing because I'll go to, because I, I just turned 40. Uh, uh, so now when I go and I hang out at the comedy store, like I have all these old friends and we used to talk about going out, getting drunk, getting laid, that whole thing. And now we're just like, so what fluid of your child did, <laughs> got on you today? Seriously. Like, that's the conversation. Like, oh, did your kid confetti cannon poop right in front of your face? Like, did that happen? Because um, I've got that story. That one was fun. <laughs> confetti cannon the poop. Yeah, it's like, you know, like, at, like, like, like after – uh, in a few weeks when you're going to see someone win the Super Bowl, there's there's going to be confetti that's going to be in the team colors. Uh, and it just comes out just a just a it, like just a huge thing. And that happened to me. But uh, it wasn't my team colors. That's for sure. No. <laughs> it wasn't the Bronco colors. <laughs> it happened to me. No, too, Brad. it wasn't even my kid. <laughs> oh, the uh, oh, you that's caught the you, worst. You, you, we call we call that the poop stray. You caught you caught the poop stray. Oh man, dude! If that if Not that happens, like the parent of that kid is just like, all right, I guess I owe you everything. Like, yeah. what do you want? Do you, do you want tickets? Do you want a bottle of something fancy? Like, I feel like I have to get that to you now. New outfit? Where do we start? I got nothing. I got to go home and change my clothes because it was at work. Uh, oh, oh boy! Wow. The joy of childhood. And then, uh, you know, it, it's all good being a parent. But then they turn and they look at you and they give your hand a squeeze or they say, I love you. or they And they come give you a hug and you're like, all right, I'll let you live another day. You're fine. <laughs> <laughs> totally worth it. Well, you mentioned yep. the Super Bowl. What do you think of these playoff games so far? And do you have any bold Super Bowl predictions? Let's see. Uh, bold Super Bowl predictions. Uh, 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 I'm like, I love it. I hope it's, I hope it's. Detroit and uh, Kansas City, just so then we get Taylor Swift versus Eminem, and I think that I think that's a fun Super Bowl, and uh, I think the memes would be hilarious. I I'm really digging 
Uh, I'm really digging Twitter right now. Twitter was kind of scary for me for a little bit, but now uh, I, I feel like it's back because during the NFL playoffs, ah, oh, the memes, the, the memes, memes are, are fantastic. So good. It's so good. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just watching. And then uh, Jason Kelsey yesterday going full Burt Kreischer at, uh, <laughs> in, in, yeah, in, so in the press box. I like how you had the out. stuff on and everything. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, pounding beers with the fans. I would love to hear, though, how every uh, uh, jacked-up, testosterone-filled, he's watching Frank Thomas commercials and just pounding testophen, uh, how every male like that is just uh, uh, how they're kind of silent about how Jason Kelsey not playing in the game but being topless in a box was so distracting to their football experience. Because a couple weeks ago, all that thought, that's all we hear is like, oh, I can't watch the NFL. Because every now and then, it cuts to a woman having fun in a press box. And I can't <laughs> stand a woman having fun. I don't get, like, I'm not even a Swifty. I'm not a Swifty. I do not a huge fan of, ta- of Taylor's music. But you cut to uh, someone's girlfriend in the box having a good time. Awesome. I don't care. It doesn't ruin my day. Does it, does it immediately cut back and there's more football? Great. Like, if, if, if they if they full-on interrupted the game and yeah. went a if we Taylor missed a Swift touchdown concert, because we were looking yeah. at her, that's different. That's yeah, seconds. that's different. Yeah, it's two seconds. She's smiling every now and then. She says, let's fucking go. And that's great. That's wonderful. Sometimes I look at Taylor Swift cheering for her boyfriend in the press box, and I look at my wife, and I go, hey, <laughs> see how she's encouraging? <laughs> <laughs> Would it you know kill what I mean? You like, wave a flag around. <laughs> yeah. Me. Meanwhile, my wife, and this is not a joke. My wife has a safe word for when I'm taking a joke too far. When I'm taking a joke too far and it's making her uncomfortable, she yells out the word cephalopod, and then I know th- that 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 I gotta pull back because you know I'm yeah because I because I'm embarrassing her at the PTA meeting uh, by doing my joke about anal sex so <laughs> I totally get that but it's like T- Taylor Swift doesn't have a safe word for when uh, Travis Kelsey's doing too much football <laughs> like, like, like she doesn't like she doesn't yell out shake it off or whatever the hell like she, you know she wants she to oh uh, she absolutely wants to but yeah. I, I yeah I, I had a great time watching that game and i and i and I, I love seeing somebody's brother just totally encouraging the and what really what really hit home to me is if uh i i watched the kelsey's podcast uh, uh i i enjoy it and sometimes they have jason's wife on and Jason's wife was in the background yesterday while he's chugging beers, shirtless, waving shirts over his head, jumping out of windows. And you see her just in the background like, yep, that's what he does. And it's just, it made me laugh all the time because my wife has definitely made that face when I'm like at the party making jokes. And everyone's like, hey, Brad's a comedian. What do you have to say? And I'm like, ha, ah, I got to type 10 minutes on this. Let's go. Um, and start yeah. the clock. <laughs> yeah. She's like, and then here my we wife. Go. Here yeah. We go. Yeah. My wife is in the background, like doing the the thing where you rub two fingers on, on your forehead. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. She, yeah. She's just doing that move. <laughs> All the signals. You know, last time you were on, we gave Kyler a really hard time. And now that I've had a year to reflect, I'd like to go even harder this time around. He managed to get worse. <laughs> so I I remember this. Last time I, I, I was on with you guys because I talked to you, uh, uh, you know, every time I'm going to the Tempe Improv, like I'm doing uh, – like I'm doing coming up. Uh, uh, really? Tickets are available. Uh, I think it's tempeimprov.com or improvtempe.com. Type in Tempe Improv. Don't click on porn. You're fine. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, yeah, just do that. And uh, yeah, Kyler Murray. I remember I was complaining because Kyler's five foot nine, and it's weird as a dwarf to be watching a football game and have and have an announcer say, "Oh my God, he's so brave at five foot nine. How does?" <laughs> How does he even exist and get out of bed being a measly five foot nine? And uh, yeah, that doesn't make me feel great. Not gonna lie, but 
but now he didn't have that great of a year, so his games weren't always on the Red Zone channel, so I was fine with that. <laughs> uh, it, but uh, And then there was rumors that he was going to leave, but I guess they're going to stick with him. Uh, so you Speaking guys will him. have a... Yeah, you guys have more Kyler, but if right now you're listening to this podcast and you're really mad at me and you're like, Brad, now because you've talked S on Kyler Murray, oh yeah, I can curse. Now because you've talked shit on Kyler Murray, uh, I'm not going to go to your shows at the Tempe Improv uh, February 1st through the 3rd. I'm not going to go to your shows. Just know that karma comes around and my Denver Broncos have about a five foot nine quarterback that's not exactly doing great for us either. <laughs> No, no kidding. We need some off-season changes, but it looks like Denver is actually going to make them, and no one is more yeah. sick of Kyler Murray than Phoenix. You're fine. Good, good. <laughs> well, I'll have I'll have some Kyler Murray jokes. Please uh, do. So if, if you got if, if you have that if, if if you just have that jersey that that you spent ninety dollars on and you're just <laughs> staring at it like you son of a bitch. But you, you but you know you can't light it on fire because hashtag stop Asian hate. Um, so you, you can't do that, uh, by, by all means, just come and let off steam at the 10 PM prop February 1st and the 3rd. Uh, and, uh, you will hear some Kyler Murray jokes. You like those seamless plugs? I'm good at those. 10 PM prop. Hell yeah. Brad, did you watch the Kings of Comedy roast on Club Shay Shay? That was entertaining. Oh, that's wow. <laughs> okay. Let's get your yeah. reaction. Yeah. There is a lot you talk about. Uh, you talk about little man going off. That Shots was fired. yeah. So here's the thing, because um, I'm getting people asking me like, "Is all that true?" Here's the thing about Cat Williams. Cat Williams is certifiably insane. Don't get me wrong; he is insane. He is a he is a crazy person, but everything he says, and it's one of the reasons why he's so brilliant and so funny is everything he says has a little bit of truth to it. Nothing he says is completely out of left field. Like, he says he reads, like, 8,000 books a year. Like, <laughs> no, okay, that's not going to happen. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, like, obviously you're exaggerating. We get it. You're in a book club, all right? <laughs> and, and, and you can't just say you're in a book club. You have to say, I read 22,000 books. Like, everything's a little nuts that he says, but there's, there's a little bit of truth to just about everything. Now, I'm not a fan of a uh, comic on comic crime. Uh, I, I, I kind of keep it all in house. You have to do something pretty egregious, uh, for me to, to, to call you out in, in which case most of it's already happening without me. No one's going like, yeah, this person did some bad stuff, but what does Brad think about it? Like no one's really thinking about that. So, uh, yeah, like I don't like to throw a bunch of comics under the bus, but mm. Hey man, that's, that's his prerogative, and uh, it's what makes Cat brilliant is that you never, you literally never know what this guy's going to say. That's true. It is strange to see him kind of go after comedians like that. That's unusual. Yeah, th don't get me wrong. Uh, when he does, I'm sitting there with a bag of popcorn just like, <laughs> all right, this is going to be fun. <laughs> like, And all, all, also, thankfully, the comedians he went after, it's like, Cedric's fine. He's not going to miss a meal. He's not. He's certainly not going to miss a meal. But uh, it's, it's like like set like Cedric's career is fine. Steve Harvey's career is fine. Like everyone's career is fine. Like like he went after people that are all successful and and that aren't. This really won't affect them that much. So that at at least that I would hate it if he went after someone that's kind of on the come up and then like that. Like that put a roadblock in their yeah. career. Even Ricky yeah. Smiley, he's not on the same level as the Steve Harvey and Cedric. However, you know he he has already had a career. Yeah, he's doing he, he he's doing fine. So I'm um, like, if you're gonna go after comics, it, it, it it's like if you were to, like, that's why the people making fun of Joe Coy for the Golden Globes roast, like if you didn't know who Joe Coy was, he's gonna be fine. You're like, is this gonna end Joe Coy's career? Yeah, no. Not. Dude sells out stadiums, not comedy clubs, not theaters, stadiums. Yeah. So he he's going to be just fine. So that's why it's like, yeah, if you want to throw a joke at Joe, at Joe Coy, get it, great. He's fine. He doesn't care. And, he, and, he, and he's going to keep going on and being crazy successful and be crazy funny as he is. So, it, but yeah, so at least he went after the big names. 
Well, speaking of just fine, recently you became the first comedian in the history of Cirque du Soleil to headline and sell out. This is a big deal, and congratulations. I want to hear more about Mad Apple in Las Vegas. Ah, it, it was great, and I loved doing it. Um, Soleil was a uh, 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 putting together show called Mad Apple, which is still going on. It's still at the New York New York Hotel. You can still go see it. I'm not in it anymore. I had a nice three month run where I kind of launched the show, uh, but now they're having a bunch of comedians come in because of the success. So, which is great. So you never kind of you never really know who you're going to see. I know right. Orny Adams has. I know Orny Adams has done it now, and he's phenomenal. My buddy uh, Gary Cannon's going to do it soon. So all good. But, uh, yeah, I, I helped launch the show, and they've never had a stand-up comedian before. And I was kind of worried. Oh, just for those of you who don't know, I, w- I would do stand-up comedy in the show. It's not like they put me in a leotard, <laughs> shot me out of a cannon, and I was just, you know, I, I flew didn't across think about the... it for a second. I did not. That sure. was never a in my mind until now. <laughs> I was like, yeah, impressed. I was already impressed with the comedy, but like, whoa! I mean, yeah, I wasn't flying through the air yelling out "wee oui, wee" oui, like like <laughs> like that. Like that wasn't how it worked. But uh, uh, they approached me and they said, "Do you want to do this?" And I said, "Absolutely." I like doing things that scare me. I like doing different things, and because I knew that going on stage at a Cirque du Soleil show in Vegas, like that's not a comedy crowd, and it wasn't a comedy audience. Like normally, I go on after my opening act. In this show, I went on after two guys that juggle each other with their feet. <laughs> like, that is, you know, so it's like, all right, you saw that, and then what could possibly top that? Well, midget telling jokes is pretty good. Um, <laughs> so that worked out. Pretty good. What a fun uh, opportunity, so, though. Yeah, no, it was, it, it was truly phenomenal, and it's a great show. And I would come out, and I would do stand-up, and I would have to do stand-up in front of people that weren't necessarily expecting a comedy show. So choosing the right material was a lot of fun and figuring that out. But just being a part of a big cast and such a talented cast, an amazing cast, and people that have a different skill set than me. But what's crazy is we were all in awe of each other's skill sets. And I'll give you a prime example of this. And this is why, like, uh, uh, Jerry Seinfeld had a great joke about public speaking, where he said public speaking is the number one fear of, of Americans more than death. So when it comes to a funeral, they would rather be in the casket than giving the eulogy. <laughs> and um, so to speak to that point, we had a guy in our cast. He's a Russian hand balancer. He goes on top of a makeshift Empire State Building. There's these little blocks that are about the size of a, of a drink coaster, and he's balancing on them on one hand. Wow. He looks like he's chiseled out of granite. He's doing these tricks. <laughs> it's unbelievable. So one night, the lights uh, malfunction at the theater and all the lights go down and the light board takes about 10 to 12 minutes to re to reboot. And they were just planning on just playing kind of elevator music while that happened. And I said, screw that. I'm a comedian. Give me a microphone. So uh, I grabbed the microphone. I ran out while the lights were all off, but it had a follow spot and I'm just, and I did 10 minutes. Uh, uh, I've got hours of material. So doing another 10 minutes, no big deal. And uh, it, it was great. The audience loved it. I got them hyped up, and then the show, uh, the show resumed, and the audience was phenomenal. When I walked off stage, the Russian hand balancer walks up to me, and with his eyes just wide, goes, "I have no idea how you do what you do." <laughs> and, and I'm looking at him like, "Oh my god! Like it's no big deal. Like for me, that's my skill set. For you." If you slip and fall, you die. If I tell a joke and it goes wrong, eh, no big deal. Like, <laughs> it, it, it's fine. It's fine. So, but that's the difference, that's and cool that's why we're all for everybody, though. All yeah, things are difficult. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And and some woman that hangs from her hair looks at me that just tells jokes and goes like, "Holy crap, that's amazing." That's the trippy part. Yeah, we like it when you step outside of your comfort zone. You know, a couple months yeah. ago, we came across an ice cream commercial you did where you guys reenacted <laughs> the final scene from Seven. All the parts yeah, were played man. by little people, and you played Brad Pitt's part. Obviously. Very well, you know, when, I might when, add. Obviously. obviously. When they said, we need a dwarf that reminds the world of Brad Pitt, <laughs> the world thought Brad Williams. That's the exact the carbon copy. Choice. <laughs> obviously. 
Um, no, it was really fun. It's a, it's an ice cream company called cold case, uh, cold case ice cream. And all the flavors are like true crime themed. So, uh, and it's really good ice cream. I hate like, I'll, I'll plug them They're It's great ice cream. And, um, it's all with like a true crime theme. So ladies, you can listen to your murder podcast while eating a pint of, uh, of, of true crime themed ice cream. It's awesome. But really? they came to me with this. Yeah, so they came to me with this theme, uh, this idea of redoing the famous "What's in the Box" scene from Seven, <laughs> and it's me. Uh, it's another dwarf actor, and it's the legendary Tony Cox. Mm-hmm. Tony Cox, you, you if you don't recognize the name, you still know him. He's the dwarf from Bad Santa. Right. He was in Me Myself and Irene. Yes. Dude, this guy goes back to Willow. He's had an amazing, phenomenal career, and I yeah. definitely. Uh, 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 it's weird as a dwarf to say I look up to him, but um, <laughs> uh, I, I do. And uh, he's playing the Morgan Freeman role, and I'm playing the Brad Pitt role. And it, 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 if you look at it, it's a shot for shot remake. We did every shot just like the movie, but we changed the lines just slightly <laughs> to be themed around ice cream. The thing went viral, over 30 million views, oh, and it's huge. just. It's pretty. It, it was pretty nuts, and people bought a lot of ice cream, which is like, yeah, it's it, you know, it's like selling air. You, you're you're selling ice cream. It's not hard, but well they, done. yeah, it was but well they done. certainly went. They certainly went above and beyond the call, and it's just fun stuff like that. I like to do different things in my career. I don't just want to go on stage every week at a new comedy club, even though I want you to see me on stage at the Tempe Improv uh, February first to the third. <laughs> I want you to be there. <laughs> but uh, I want to do things that are a little bit strange. I want to do Cirque du Soleil. I want to do true crime ice cream commercials. Um, yeah. This week, uh, the week we're recording this, I'm going on the Chris Jericho Rock and Wrestling Rager at Sea. Whoa, it's a wow. wrestling. It's it's a wrestling cruise that also has wow. heavy metal and comedy. So it's like, yeah, I want I want to do all that. <laughs> <laughs> that great. that is awesome. You know, now that you mentioned fighters, have you ever been in the same room as someone who was like a really big deal, but you had no idea who they were until someone told you after? Dude, that is all the time. Uh, <laughs> especially at, it, especially when you hang out at, uh, when you hang out at the comedy store. Yeah, like I've taken like group photos where I'm in the photo because you know Bert Kreischer is also in the photo, or Bill Burr is also in the photo, or whomever. And then I'll post the photo and someone will be like, holy crap, you were, you were standing next to Lil Pump and Dump, the, <laughs> the, the world famous TikToker. And I'm just like, all right, I don't know who Lil Pump and Dump is. What do they do? I, I don't know. So they review toilets. Okay. Oh, that's so okay, funny. Great. 90 million yeah. followers. <laughs> yeah. And, and they just bought a yacht. Okay. Well, all right. Well, I didn't hit them up for money. I, I should have. <laughs> but uh, yeah. So it, it's always it, it, it's always kind of a cool thing that, um, you know, you could kind of be next to different artists that you don't know what they do and you just hang out yeah. with them and turns out they're really cool. It does happen. And it, especially at comedy clubs that happened to us recently, we were just at Brian Callen's show the other night was hanging out afterwards and he has a strong following of fighters. Fighters love this guy. So there was a sure. lot of cauliflower in the screen room and Brian even told <laughs> us some of them were gold medal winning Olympian fighters, but the most yeah. unassuming guy, the friendliest looking guy, pretty much the only one who I was like, maybe I could stand a chance against him if I was forced into a physical confrontation. That was apparently Henry Cejudo, Triple C, the only person mm. alive to win an Olympic gold medal in a UFC championship, considered one of the greatest combat athletes of all time. <laughs> the <laughs> confidence yep. you have. Would have chopped you down yep. like a fucking yeah, redwood, bro. Right. He would have eaten me as a snack. Yeah, yeah that's, uh, yeah, there's definitely, that's the thing about dudes, and you got to respect it, but also it's so lame. That we can look at like almost like there 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 are guys that look at the ninth player on the bench of an NBA team and they go, I could probably get a few points off of him. Like no, 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 no you no, can't. No, you can't. <laughs> no, you can't. No, you can't. Someone like that. It's like one wide receiver drops one ball, and they're like, "Oh, so lame! They should be able to catch that ball." It's like, no, you can't even fathom jumping up in the air 
while a guy who weighs 240 pounds of chiseled granite who can run a 4640 is trying to take your head off. Like you don't you all of us all of us out there would play one play in the NFL. One play. Pick any position. We would be a punter. One play <laughs> in the NFL. And we would immediately run to the sideline and go, I don't want to do that ever again. Hospitalization. Like, yeah. oh, get me out of here. <laughs> yes. So, like, yeah, just just stop it with that. But, uh, yeah, there are times like that where just and, – and especially fighters, because um, uh, my wife's a fighter, so I kind of get the discipline – uh, where like really? my wife will never, yeah, yeah. Uh, she's uh, like, see, this is what happens though. I end up bragging about her cause she never says anything about it. She's just like, no, it's a part of my life. It was, you know, I did it for 20 years. Now I'm done. Like, uh, uh, and she doesn't, she doesn't like to bring up the fact that in Taekwondo at one point she was ranked number two in the nation. Like wow. she, do- wow. she doesn't like, yeah, she doesn't like to do that, but I'm just the guy that's like, yeah, she's awesome. Uh, Hell yeah. but you, yeah, it's the most unassuming thing in the world because you just come over to the house and you know, she's got a baked good for you and you don't think <laughs> that like, Oh, if some, if some stuff happens, like, like, yeah, if something goes bump in the middle of the night, I don't go downstairs. That's for darn sure. <laughs> Honey, feels, wake up. Feels like this is yeah. your territory. <laughs> we have a, we have, yeah, we have a 90 pound pit bull and the 90 pound pit bull still looks at my wife and goes, you handle this. Yeah. <laughs> You're up. You're trained. Not me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Which by the way, I, I, uh, I sleep next to a 90 pound pit bull in a and a fourth dawn black belt, I sleep so well. You sleep soundly, <laughs> my friend. Yeah, it's nice. It's great. <laughs> well, I know you'll smoke every now and then, but I heard you won't take more than like a ten milligram edible. Is this true? Mm-hmm. No, I don't do. No, I, I, I no. Uh, I've got way too many stories. Mine was in Vegas, uh, like, like you do. Me and a bunch of friends were going to see. Uh, I, I forget what show, but it was a show. Uh, I think it was Penn and Teller. Anyway, so we're go- we're going to go see Penn and Teller, and my friend hands me a red velvet cookie. Now I lo- that red velvet's my absolute favorite. I love that flavor of anything, and I take the cookie and I go sweet, and I eat the cookie. My and because my friend just hand me the cookie, and then he turned to talk to somebody else for a second, and by the time he looked back at me, cookie's gone, and he just looks at me and goes, "Wait, where's oh. the cookie?" Oh no. And I go, I ate the cookie. The whole thing? <laughs> yeah, and he goes, yeah. And I'm like, yeah. And I'm like, I ate the cookie. He's like, the whole cookie? Yeah. Who takes two bites of a cookie? <laughs> like, like, back. we're sharing? No. You gave me a cookie. I ate the cookie. He's like, oh, you were supposed to take like a fourth of that. That was for the group. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> this is not going to go well. And it did not. Some so, uh, would have been nice. <laughs> yeah. I ended up uh, walking because we're, because we're it's the old denial thing, so we're just walking to the show like we'll be fine. I'm, I'm sure I'll be fine. I'll be okay. And I'm walking, and all of a sudden, it was like I was a marionette puppet, and the puppet master just <laughs> dropped the handle. Like it was just <laughs> collapsed right to the ground. And uh, yeah, that was that was a fun night. Uh, 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 but uh, uh, my girlfriend at the time, now my wife uh was like freaking out and i knew i had to let her know that i was okay and i and i could barely speak i was so high and <laughs> the security guard runs over and then goes what happened to him and i don't know how i i managed to do this but i just like said through the through my breath i go it's okay i was a dwarf before <laughs> and <laughs> Once that happened, uh, my wife was just like, "Oh, he's fine. He's, he's okay. Gonna he's, he's, fine. he's gonna make it." <laughs> yeah, it, cause, yeah. If he if if he's still cracking jokes, he's fine. So yeah, that was that was uh, that was how, that was how that went. So yeah, if like like if I'm in a green room and everyone's you know doing a little puff puff pass, great, nothing wrong with that. It's fun, but yeah, edibles. Oof, it's like I'll take. Uh, like now I've learned my lesson. Like I will take a quarter of a gummy. Like I will take like, man. So pe- so people say like, uh, 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 the acronym WAG, uh, stands for like wives and girlfriends. 
Uh, for me, WAG is weak ass gummy. Give me some weak <laughs> ass gummies, and I am good. Perfect. That is a good day. Do you not come to me. And, yeah, do not come to me with the like. This is the good shit. I want the good shit. You don't want to get Ari Shafir out in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that can mean so many things. Uh, but yes. Ari is so determined to make me do mushrooms. I've never done mushrooms because I'm because I have I have weird visions when I'm sober, so I can't imagine what I see when I'm, you know, like like uh, like Will Smith took ayahuasca and then six months later he was on stage at the Oscars slapping Chris Rock. Slapping people. I don't want to. Yeah. There. <laughs> I don't want to know what I what I would see if I was on mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> he likes to get you yeah. when you're not looking. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, he wants. Yeah, he wants everyone to do mushrooms. He's one of the guys that thinks like, yeah, if we were all just on mushrooms, then the world would be a better place. And he's probably right because we'd all just be laying on the couch watching di- watching Disney Plus for twelve hours. <laughs> like, like that. We we wouldn't like. Don't get me wrong. Nothing would get done. No one would build anything. No one would like. You know, the food uh, line would shut down. But we'd all be really happy. <laughs> We'd all be he, Shroom Fest. That's already right. Didn't yeah, he, yeah. Yep. He started like, mm-hmm. <laughs> like a national day. He's making it a holiday. It does create. Yeah. Some, it's a good place some to start. Bonds, yeah, you know. it does. Yeah. Well, let's move on to what we call the Fast Five, where we give you five general questions and you answer as quickly as you can. Sure. What's your favorite movie to quote? Oh. <laughs> uh, uh, oh God, I've got so many. All right, um, top, top three. Uh, top three. Uh, okay. Um, man. Sorry, like, I, like there's just time. so many. Take your time. Uh, like, you, you know what? Uh, I was, it, it sounds so cheesy, but it's true. I was I, I was at the Comedy Cellar uh, last week, and me and Adam Ferrara were quoting uh, Goodfellas, just going back and forth, <laughs> and it was just... That was fun. Such That's a just a good time. Quote. And he's a great There's guy so to quote many. him with. Yeah, because yeah, he's so Italian. He's so Italian. So it's, it's, <laughs> yeah, it? he's, the, he's the most Italian. Was he in it? He should have been. No, he wasn't in he, it. Like, <laughs> he could have been. Nah, I, he he, uh, he, he could have played one of the kids in he's the opening young, scene. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah, he, yeah, he was way too young. But uh, yeah, so that, I mean, that's always a fun one. But like, and there's so many that are just like, if not the full, uh, if not the full movie, just little quotes every now and then. Like I've definitely quoted Happy Gilmore recently, just saying the price is wrong, Classic. bitch. Like it, it, it's it's just it, it's just good. It's it's just a good time. Like, dude, th- this is why I love being a guy. Men could sit around qu- just quote movies. That's it. No context. Just quote movies and name uh, basketball players from the nineties, and we're happy. Like, so that's true. all we could, yeah, Dude. like, you could just look at, you could just look at a friend and say, I think we need a bigger boat, and he can <laughs> respond, and he can respond Cliff Robinson, and you guys are happy as hell. Like, it, that's, it's the two of that's my favorite things dude. you're talking about here, buddy. Yeah. I just yeah. want more females yeah. to, like, quote on my level. Like, if, if you're a quote or a female out there, like, reach out, please. Blair, Blair can hang. Yeah, Blair drops some hot quotes, and nobody gets them because they're just too good. You Don't do. you hate that when you, like, have the perfect timing, the perfect quote, and they just... Have no fucking and they clue. And they're left unappreciated. Oh my god, we wasted a uh, surprise on you. <laughs> this is this is me in a text thread all the time with my non-comic friends. Like I'm just like I'll just drop lines and quotes and references, and I'm just like, you guys have no idea how good that is. Like I wasted <laughs> that on you. This shit is so fire. Professional. Come on. You should be paying me to do that. You should be paying me to do that. You're People do. To be in this thread right now. Thirty bucks yeah. a month if you want to keep being my friend. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's called Brad Plus. Subscribe. <laughs> Brad Plus. <laughs> Just to get on the thread, the private thread. Oh. Sure. You're being sold as an action figure. What two accessories do you come with? Ooh, um, I'd say a microphone, just because. Perfect. Yeah, I, I, nice. use that. I use that all the time. Uh, a microphone and a dog leash. Uh, the microphone obviously because that's what i do and the dog leash because one of my favorite things to do all day is uh is uh choke myself while i masturbate yeah! see, yeah! see yeah! you yeah! thought yeah! i was gonna Roger say you thought you was gonna you... say we <laughs> different direction <laughs> yeah 
So I'd say, uh, yeah, I'd say uh, microphone and dog leash. <laughs> Those are great. Those are amazing. All right. Favorite app on your phone? Oh, favorite app on my phone. All right. Let me look at the phone right now. Um, uh, all right. Um, here's one. And it sounds, all right, there's two. Uh, favorite app on the phone. If I'm playing a game, there's a game called Toy Blast, and it's just stupid. He's so and ashamed. It's, a, don't, don't it's addicting. It's just, it's, I, I hate this game because I like it so much. So it just sucks. Uh, uh, but, yeah, uh, so that one. And then uh, the app I actually love is the app Cameo. I'm on Cameo. And because I know whenever I see something pop up, I'm like, ah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to make some money. <laughs> That's a good yeah. app. Yeah, That's why a not? Good app. Who was your first celebrity crush? Oh, easy. Jennifer Love Hewitt. All day. Yeah. Party of five, Jennifer Love Hewitt. Tyler would say the same. Yeah, I was going to say, it's mm-hmm. not the first time we've heard that. Not my first, but definitely one of the uh, top five. You should on your Mount Rushmore of yeah. celebrity crushes. Celebrity Spain. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So um, I would say, so, and then one time I actually got to meet her, and that was very weird. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 that was at a the most random spot. It was at a Taco Bell in Burbank. And, um, nice. yeah, I'm just in line and I, and I look behind me and there's Jennifer Love Hewitt and I didn't say anything. And everyone's like, why did you say anything? It's like, cause what's the line? Like, what do you, you're, you're in a Taco Bell. You're like, like, Oh, like, what do I do? Turn to her and be like, well, you're all, you're already making one bad decision. Do you want to make another one? Like, 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 what do you do? What's the line? Come on. How hot do you um, like your sauce? Yeah, yeah go, it's player. just yeah. It, it's They're like, hey, you want? Yeah, do you want to know what else they call the bell beefer? Like, come <laughs> on, like, like, what do you say? It, it's so I didn't say anything, but yeah, Je- uh, Jennifer Love Hewitt when she was like Party of Five, the movie can't hardly wait. Like, that's just uh, that's me. Yeah, I yeah. you know what you did last summer. That's it's uh, no, classic. Can't hardly wait, though. I feel like that was the pinnacle of. That was that was the ab- that was the absolute that was the yep. summit. Love Hewitt, Love Hewitt Mountain. Wow, uh, <laughs> so many jokes are there... going through my head right now. <laughs> There's many that would climb that mountain, <laughs> right? Yeah, there you go. Both of <laughs> there them. it is. That's why you let the woman say that joke. It yeah. sounds creepy if I say that joke. <laughs> so that she let the woman say it. it. She did it. You had first I'll right say away. It for you. There you go, Blair. Mm-hmm. All right. How about favorite postcoital snack? Uh, um, <laughs> coconut water. You got to rehydrate, man. <laughs> Electrolytes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I, it's weird. I'm usually like, all right. So I'm 40. Uh, uh, I'm a dad. Uh, my, my, my wife is in her 30s. There's no activity after that. After that, it's bed. Okay, yeah. that's. That's it. There's no like, oh, so now what do we do? No, we did it. We peaked. That's that that's was what it. That was our late night activity. Yeah. So there's no like, ooh, now do you want to go get cookies? No, it's just, it, we're done. We're, we're done. done. Grab the coconut water. Yeah, that was the finale. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Pound of coconut water so you don't get a cramp in the middle of the night and then go to bed. Good night. <laughs> go to bed. Yeah. But mm-hmm. we like to play a game on every episode and include our guest as well. There's been a lot of wild headlines in the news lately. People are weird. And I want to see if you could distinguish the real headlines from the ones that were completely made up. Mm, okay. Let's see how you do here. Man host joint baby shower for five women. He got pregnant at the same time. Well, it's nice to hear that uh, Nick Cannon is still doing his thing. <laughs> it was only five this time. Philanthropy mission he's got going on. <laughs> yeah. You're going to say real? Oh, uh, uh, that is a real headline. That is a real headline from just a week ago on Unilad. Zeddy Willis was the guy. He looks really young, too, like early 20s. They posted videos of, like, the most uncomfortable shower ever. But everyone seemed pretty civil. (laughs) You're trying to move the shower, and you have to be like, so which baby mama are you here for? That's yeah, That's I don't know. I guess the baby mamas are all nice because I don't. Know, maybe they just want the checks to keep cash in for child support. I'm hoping. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, that's 
Man, that is an awkward situation. That's like, so I, awkward. They say it takes no, a dysfunctional uh, village. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> to no raise kidding. I guess. Kids. Yeah, I guess all the women are just looking at each other like, I can't judge you. We all made the same bad decision. <laughs> like, at least it was a positive experience. It's like, well, let's do it. My question yeah. is, how many women would he have to be sleeping with in total to get five pregnant at the same time? Fifty. <laughs> like you would, it, yeah. You would think at least double digits. Yeah, it's an exponent of ten. <laughs> you see, now like Tyreek Hill is like, see, honey, I'm not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> Cut me some slack here. <laughs> Send you exactly. this article. Cheetah likes to run. All right, next one here. A solid nine inch turd falls out of a stripper while performing on stage. Requests for her lap dances are up 300%. Oh, I'm going to hmm, see. I'm going to go with my gut and say that's a false headline, but in my head I'm like, someone on someone on OnlyFans just got an idea. <laughs> <laughs> that is a real headline from True. a few weeks wow. ago. KVTA4.com. Marianne Diamond Simmons is a popular stripper at Oxnard Spearmint Rhino, and now an even more popular stripper. Two for the log ride, please. <laughs> <laughs> Lines out wow. the door for Diamond. <clears throat> I cannot get over that. I mean, how do you react if just a nine-inch loaf falls out of the stripper? Round of applause. Uh, I mean, sure. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I, I don't know. You put some Metamucil in her drink? Like, I, I, I'm not sure. She's Are got enough okay? fiber. Sure. Fiber. Nine inches of fiber. coconut water? <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's not the first That's not the first thing that's nine inches that's been in there. But, no kidding. Uh, yeah, but that's, wow. For, for that it is, to that fall is out, a, you have to believe that's true. That That is a headline where I think, I, I I think I'm a good person because as soon as soon as that happens, I just kind of look around my boys and go, "Well, night's done." <laughs> like, I can't. There's it. Taco Bell anymore? There's yeah. There there's no. What do we do now? Like yeah. that's that that's it. Who's up oh, for man. some fourth meal? <laughs> yeah. No All right. Disney World will begin drug testing at the gates to help combat the estimated three out of every ten guests being under the influence of drugs. Uh, that is a, definitely a false headline because there's no way, uh, Disney stock is not that high right now. There's no way they're turning away all that money. He's, he's correct. Yeah. And he showed his work. Yes. Well brilliant. done. Mm -hmm. Well done. Mousetrap. Yeah. News. We fell forward. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Canceled our trip. <laughs> <laughs> Just created our body. <laughs> Naked man cannonball plunges into a giant aquarium at Bass Pro Shops in Alabama. Oh, I saw that video. Yeah, that's a real headline. <laughs> that's, true, yeah. that's real, dude. That's a real headline. And not only is he naked. Okay, so the same thing. All right. So you know how you and your uh, partner will probably watch shows like Ninety Day Fiance, yeah. so you'll feel be so you'll feel better about your own relationship. Um, <laughs> Great decision making. Yes. Yes. Look I see at where, us. Yeah. See we where you're going. Yes. Yeah. If you're ever having problems, you just look over. You watch Nine Day Fiance, and then you'll look at your partner and be like, "I love you so much. You're the best. You're not them." <laughs> at least they so, didn't buy you. Yeah, the same way we do that. If you're a man and you're not feeling that confident about that area, watch this video because you will be like, "Well, at least I don't have a fish egg in between my legs." Because that guy's got <laughs> nothing. <laughs> He's got nothing. Like, oh my god. Like, like, like. I thought they were blurring the video. And it's like, oh, no, that's just. <laughs> they didn't feel that it was necessary. <laughs> Ken doll, he didn't, they, he didn't need it. Yeah. Like, I thought he was doing, like, uh, 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 like, the, like, the, like the Buffalo Bill from uh, uh, <laughs> freaking Silence of the Lambs. And he's not. It's so just tough. that small. Goodbye, yeah, versus. So, yeah. Oh, my God. So you'll, you'll feel so good about yourself. You'll you'll feel like you're freaking Lexington Steel. Three guys went nuts. They got the reference. Uh, yeah, but yeah, so great. we use him in games all the time for um, porn, porn star or whatever. He's my hero. Lexington Steel, man, great reference. <laughs> Thank you, sir. They didn't waste it on you. You Love did it. not waste uh, it. Yeah. yeah. So what? Yeah. Watch that video. You'll feel great about yourself. And have your and have your wife or girlfriend watch the video. She'll be like, oh, you're you're a horse. <laughs> <Great>. <laughs> These Florida monkeys could give you herpes. Here's where they've been found. I mean, 
if monkeys were doing it, it wouldn't be the, the it, that wouldn't even crack the top 10 of weirdest things in Florida to give you an STD. <laughs> uh, so I said that's a re- I said that's a real headline. That is a real headline. Oh, I yeah. like how they try to entice readers by telling you where the herpes monkeys are, but they also say like right in the headline, it's in Florida. <laughs> out, um, I mean, all over again. Yeah, some people would get worried. I would say like, well, I'm not really worried because I don't fuck monkeys, uh, <laughs> so I'm gonna be okay. Good. I think I'm good. Yeah, Got a whole lot of like contact if- there. <laughs> yeah, like if you read that article and you're like, "Oh God, I'm in danger." There's other practices in your life that are that, that are not going well. Like, no like kidding. that's just a dangerous thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Once the lady was on Oprah for the chimpanzee uh, ripping off her face, I'm like, I'm good with the monkeys. Man, I'm good, good with the monkeys. Savage. All right, just mm-hmm. do a couple more here. Woman quits job to earn six figures a month acting as a dog on OnlyFans. It's got to be true. <sighs> Yeah, that that that's my thing. Is like, there's so I that's that that that's not even the that that's not even on the Mount Rushmore of of weird things that people are making money on OnlyFans for. Like, do you remember the do you remember the headline? It was like last year, maybe two years ago, of like the woman that was selling her farts in a jar, and yeah, she, and she was like, yeah, 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 yeah. And she was doing yeah, she was doing six figures from that. So yeah, that's a true headline. Man, that is a true headline. Jenna Phillips from Austin quit her job to live like a dog full time. Now she pulls in over six figures a month. She says that she's always felt like a dog growing up, but not in a sexual way at first. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> until. Until. Dot, dot, dot. Well, now that she's in heat. <laughs> All right, let's do one more of these. See if you can guess this headline. Popular comedian fooled by swollen gummy bear trick on Instagram. Oh, this fooled me. <laughs> <laughs> you know the videos where they leave a gummy bear in water and come back a few hours later yeah. to find it the size of a shoe? Here to comment, comedian and recent clickbait victim Brad Williams. Brad, can you tell us what it was about the video that led you to believe it was authentic? Because I wanted to believe that I can have a giant gummy bear in my house and just like walk up to my daughter and be the best dad in the world. It, it was like... It's like a gummy bear, water, and like salt, or like something like that. And and it was like, oh no, it explodes. And it's like now the size you have a gummy bear the size of a football. Like that's what I thought it was gonna be. To- totally fooled me. We've all been fooled by that stuff. It that, has happened. I did hear you talk about that though. That was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> that legit fooled me. So so even if it's not a real headline, that happened to me. So it's real. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for doing that, Brad. And don't forget to check out Brad's latest special, Starfish, on Veeps. It is a must-watch. You can stay well-informed with everything he's up to at bradwilliamscomedy.com and follow him on IG at bradwilliamscomic. Brad will be at Tempe Improv on Thursday, February 1st through Sunday the 3rd. Tickets are available at tempeimprov.com, but going fast, almost half the shows are already sold out. Brad, it's always a pleasure, my friend. Please let us know if you need anything while you're in town. We look forward to seeing you at the show. We didn't get to make it out last time. These Brad Williams shows sell out quickly in we Phoenix. Need to <laughs> yeah, make the show. They, they sell out. They they sell out quickly. They so do, yeah, especially uh, the but, early uh, ones. Yeah, but lo- but love to have you there if you can. If not, totally understand because because uh, I always love talking with you guys. Likewise, if you have time to split a gummy or grab a drink after, they're on us. <laughs> Sounds great, man. Thanks, Brad. Thank you're the man. You. Thanks, Brad. Appreciate it. All right. Take care. Thanks, everybody. He is so much fun, always. Always so damn funny. That was good. What a cool guy. I wonder if there's any word from Ginger Bear. Oh, still reaching out, you think? That ice cream commercial. That was so damn funny. It was so funny. If you haven't seen it, you need to see it. We'll be posting that. That was, that did go pretty viral, and we do need to post that. That was hilarious. I would like to see that kind of start a trend. Even if it was just Brad Williams kind of taking other Brad Pitt parts, reimagining the movies oh, with a little I cast. Love yes. This. Fight Club, immediately a better movie. I'm, Who isn't watching that? Immediately. Inglorious Bastards, Ocean's Eleven, World War Z, all improved if they were reimagined the way they were meant to be seen. Troy, they literally hide in a toy horse. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh, it's so good. Brad would be so jacked as Troy. <laughs> Achilles. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you can see it. I mean, Brad was all CGI'd into into form. Sure. They could give him the 300 treatment. Yeah. Now that's the movie that needs to be redone. Ooh. 300 for Sparta. <laughs> for Sparta. <laughs>
Well, if you're not following us on TikTok, it's something crunchy. What's the matter with you? Get involved and find us on Facebook as well. New Dream Car Giveaway over at 8080. In addition to the 15% off you get for using code Crunchy, every dollar you spend gets you entered in for a chance to win a brand new Lamborghini or twin turbo R8 plus $60,000 in cash. You do not want to miss out. Nor do you want to forget to check out somethingcrunchy.com where you'll find every episode, our links to social media, and the Almighty Crunch Store where you'll find all kinds of crunchy gear showing that you are a proud citizen of Crunch Nation. This has been another episode of Something Crunchy, and as always, don't ever forget to live your crunchiest life and be crunchy to one another. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, follow, and all that crunchy good shit. All episodes can be found at somethingcrunchy.com and on all podcast platforms. Thank you for listening. I have no idea how you do what you do.